I genuinely believe that I have the skills and experience necessary to stand up here and make sure that each SJCR meeting runs smoothly and hopefully entertainingly. Secondly, I feel as though I will successfully be able to interpret the Constitution, having had experience tackling other complex documents in the past, both as a legal intern and having worked at the European Union in Strasbourg over the summer. Finally, I would genuinely try my best to engage as many people as possible in the workings of the SJCR, whether that be through entertaining emails popping up in your inbox, or simply by making SJCR general meetings as engaging and accessible as possible. But the real question is, how would I, as chair, make the SJCR even better? How would I follow on from the extremely high standard which has been set before me? <laughs> well, luckily for, you, <laughs> uh, luckily for you, I've managed to condense my aims into three main points. My first aim would be to improve the accessibility of the constitutional documents. I'm pretty sure that most of you here haven't trawled through the 46 pages of, although of course very important, not particularly riveting constitutional documents. In an attempt to change this and make such an important document more accessible, I would aim to produce a condensed version of the Constitution, highlighting the most important parts in a more manageable form, in an attempt to ensure that as many people as possible can get to know our system and how it works. My second aim would be to improve the accessibility of SJCR meetings themselves, with the aim of increasing turnout and thus making sure the decisions we make are as legitimate as possible. It can be really overwhelming attending an SJCR meeting if you're not acquainted with the mystical acronyms, abbreviations and customs that litter almost every aspect of our meetings. In an attempt to make SJCR meetings seem less daunting, I'd like to produce a kind of demystifying SJCR lingo flyer that would be available at meetings on your chairs um, and online and would hopefully remove some of the confusion surrounding our terminology and procedures. In terms of accessibility, I'd also like to look into how we can ensure that the process for submitting motions is as open and accessible as possible. I've spoken to several people who've told me that they want to submit a motion, but they just don't know how to, or they've been put off by standing up here and talking to all you people, as lovely as you are. I'd like to look into a way of eliminating this as a factor which is discouraging people from proposing motions. One way in which, in which I think this could be achieved would be by introducing a kind of drop-in session with the chair before SJCR meetings and maybe creating some kind of form for the submission of motions which people can pick up, fill in and ask any questions they might have. My third aim would be to improve the freshers' introduction to the SJCR, which I believe, if made more effective, could seriously improve turnout and engagement with the SJCR. Freshers' week, as we all know, can be really <coughs> overwhelming, with tons of new information being thrown into <coughs> the left, right and centre. Having spoken to people in my year, I think a lot of people came away from our mock SJCR meeting equally confused as they went into it. Obviously, it's really difficult to explain something that we might feel really familiar with to a group of people who have no clue what we're on about when we're talking about the exec, the CCR, the MCR, the SU, and so the list goes on. Thus, I would aim to really make the SJCR introductory, take the SJCR introductory meeting back to basics <coughs> and would look into ways to make it even more engaging perhaps by producing an SJCR introduction video or something similar. So, I'm going to bring this speech to a close now, because you've all had your pizza and you probably want to go back to your rooms. Basically, if you take anything from this speech, and I know it will be difficult considering how many you're going to hear tonight, although I might not be able to recite the Constitution inside out and back to front, despite poring over it in preparation for tonight, I genuinely believe that although, of course, a knowledge of the Constitution is vital, being chair of the SJCR is about far more than that. It's about being reliable, engaging, and most of all, making the SJCR the best it can be. So please vote for me. Thank you. Hi everyone, 
Uh, for those of you that don't know me yet, my name is Ralph and I'm a second year student studying physics. Um, I'm aware this meeting is going to be a drag on this also, I'm going to keep my husk so short and snappy, something I'm sure you'll be familiar with from, if I have the honour of being elected as next year's chair. So let's get to it. The role of chair and the constitu do constitutional documents are two things that will forever be linked. Um, to address what you and the other members of the college want out of a good chair, you must first ask what SGR, SJCR members want from constitutional documents. So could everyone who has actually looked at the constitution, even briefly, just put their hand up now? Can I see? Can you keep your hand up if you've actually read through the entirety of it? A few less. Um, the, reason why, the reason why hardly anyone reads through this document is because it's long, it's technical, and it's most you know, mostly fairly irrelevant to most members. And um, what most people want out of a chair is somebody who has such a firm grasp of the Constitution, um, and a firm grasp of proceedings of meetings and rules stated throughout the Constitution, that whenever anybody has a problem, a suggestion, or a solution, I can help you turn that idea into policy. And this will allow the SJCR to progress and improve. Um, as a candidate for chair, I possess extensive knowledge of the Constitution and its workings and can help guide anyone to turn their ideas into a plan of action. <coughs> now, the SJCR is revolved around the people. Without our members, it's just a bunch of documents and social spaces it's just sitting around hoping that somebody comes along and does something. We want as much engagement as possible, um, especially with freshers, new to college, bursting with ideas and energy. Um, they want to make change, and it's great to see so many of you out here now. Um, hopefully, it's not just for the pizza. <laughs> um, to be honest, John's actually does a really good job of student engagement. Just looking at the last presidential election for all the colleges, um, John's had the third highest turnout of every college, despite there being only one candidate. Um, I want to continue the spirit of getting people involved, even if some people just really want to get stuck into college life, but for whatever reason, these meetings aren't you know, their type of thing, or they don't really like talking about policy, as I know a lot of people don't really like doing. If you elect me, my plan is to get as much low-level involvement as possible. This means advocating strongly, especially to, um, among freshers, for small teams that end up really running the SJCR. That's like the Welfare Team, FICOM, Student Union Committee, Social Events Committee, and all the others that I don't have time to mention. I know that my experience on SEC has really kept me in touch with the college throughout my second year living out. It's helped me understand how the SJCR really works to points where I'm comfortable to come up here and ask for your support to move into a bigger role where I can have more of an impact. When we students get involved in these things, we make John's family and home from home that we all love. Um, finally, I want to increase engagement by attaching minutes of previous meetings to a notice board, possibly outside the dining, dining hall, and if possible, um, put a laptop logged into Julia around there during election periods. Um, this means students um, who are lining up in a lunch queue can easily interact with what's going on in the SJCR very conveniently. A lot of people that don't have time for these meetings can come up there now. Um, and also it may provide some food for thought and conversation over dinner. Um, sum it all up, um, vote for me as a steady hand in the constitution, a sharp experienced chair, and a huge advocate for low level, ground up involvement in the SJCR. And hopefully, if I'm lucky enough to be elected, I look forward to seeing you all again next term from the side of the podium. Thank you. Um, I'm sort of torn between two, and that's the one that Amy just mentioned. If somebody says um, "stranger in the house," then and somebody else can shout um, "let the cat out," and then that person has to leave. Um, the other one is the um, the first policy of the SJCR, which um, we just ratified in our last meeting just yesterday. Which is anyone petting or snogging in um, in the bar gets um, a pint of water thrown on them by the senior bar officer. <laughs> 
Um, both of you mentioned that the Constitution is a sort of mystifying document and you want to demystify it and make more people engaged with it. Um, from my point of view, I understand that the Constitution, the nature of the Constitution is that all parts of it are really significant because that's how it holds together. Um, so how would you decide which bits are important and which bits you don't tell people about but then risk that they don't know about should they need to? Like, how do you choose which bits you make more visible? Um, OK, so, so my main point isn't that... Um, well, yes, the Constitution is absolutely complicated and is very comprehensive. Um, my point is not that it is too complicated and comprehensive. I just believe that for the majority of members of the SJCR, they don't want to engage with that level of complication. Um, it will be my job as chair to be the bridge between the complexity of the Constitution and their ideas and their simplicity. So if they come to me for ideas, I can use my knowledge of the Constitution to turn their ideas into policy without them dragging their butts straight through the Constitution, trying to work out what they want, I can help them. Um, so as I mentioned in my speech, I'm a manifesto, I'd quite like to produce a condensed version of the Constitution. And I think the main way of doing that would just be to like simplify the language, um, and I've actually, because I've been trying to trace through the Constitution in preparation for today, um, I've managed to produce my own condensed version just to like look at on the go, you know, on your phone as you do. Um, <laughs> and that is eight pages actually, and that has most of the key points in it. So I'd say just like simplifying the language and just picking out those points that really are relevant most of the time. Like there are some clauses and bits that. Of course, they're important, but they're less often, less, like they're less likely to occur. So maybe go for the points that will be relevant to everyone on like a more general basis. Okay. Andrew, uh, a question of clarification for Amy. Yes. My predecessor as vice chair produced a constitution for dummies that was about eight pages long and had the name points in it. No one read it. How would you <laughs> make sure that if you produce such a document, people would actually engage with it? I mean, that's a hard question, but I think someone's more likely to engage with an eight-page document than a four to six-page one. Maybe we could put it out in places, like, I don't know, at dinner, if you fancy having a little flip through the Constitution, maybe. That could be a fun activity. Um, there's no emailing it out, perhaps. That might encourage people to read it. I don't know, you could do like a quiz on the condensed version of the Constitution. <laughs> free food, free, I don't know, incentivize people to learn it. I, I try my best, I can assure you. Um, I would just like to know, what would be at the top of your list for uh, the things that you would reform in the Constitution, if there were things you were going to fix, say, at the next reform? Um, so, a lot of, there's a lot of weird loopholes and slightly ambiguous statements. So, um, one example, and I, I don't really like pointing this out too often, um, is the, the previous um, presidential election, so not the one that... Um, not the one where Joe was um, inaugurated, but the one in which Kara was. Um, uh, the, the, the real procedures on the, on the tie is to, is to flip a coin for it rather than revert to previous, um, previous rounds. It, it's just something that the SJCR just misses, and as many of these points that come throughout the Constitution, it's just the, the, the belief is there, but it's just never happened, so nobody really knows about it. So it's just whenever these type of things come up is to immediately go to the Constitution, try and ratify it so that the intention is still there, um, but the wording is now suited towards the intention. Um, perhaps looking into like, the quorum for SJCR meetings. I think, I know, well I know in the Constitution it says that our um, meetings should have a six of the SJCR members, but I don't, we don't count the members every time and that we don't make sure that the quorum is there. So maybe some way of incorporating that. Sorry. Um, what sort of chair would you uh, choose to describe yourself in? Um, I would say maybe like an office chair, because that's quite. It can be a good practical chair. You can rely on it to get the work done. But then, if you want to, you know, it can be a bit fun. You can spin around an office chair. It's not boring. It's not just going to stand still and do nothing. You can, you know. Yeah, it's a good mixture, a good balance. I think as a chair you need to be very serious and get the job done, but also a lot of it is about engagement and 
encouraging people to get involved in the SJCR and I think if you take it way too seriously and yeah it just will just put people off and that's not something we want to do. Um, I like to think of uh, myself more as a sort of a bar stool type chair. Um, <laughs> sort of, you, you sit by it, you, you're, not, you're not slumping around, you're, you're having a chat with um, anybody who's around, just really engaging with them. Um, sort of in a relaxed manner, but not so much that you're just completely slumping back and having a little bit of a nap. You can't nap on a bar stool. <laughs> 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 Any more questions? Okay, this last one will. So, um, you both mentioned the Constitution is a really important document. <laughs> Um, and I hate to grill you on it, um, but um, <laughs> chair, <laughs> chair as a role um, has to remain relatively impartial, and there are certain conditions um, under which that's really important. So um, in the event of an official complaint against an SJCR officer, the chair must investigate, um, but only under some conditions. Can you explain what they are and when and how you conduct an investigation into them? Firstly, Andrew, I, I'm really sorry, but somebody's been asking um, constitutional questions, and it's not you this time. I was going to ask anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is, um, yeah, it's a serious point. Um, the chair is somebody who um, has to hold the exec accountable. Um, this is a large part of their role, but technically the, the chair themselves is not part of the exec, but they're invited onto the exec by the current exec members, um, just to hold the same sort of standing as them. Um, ways, points in which um, the chair might have to investigate members is um, if there's um, potentially um, welfare issues that, um, that between um, various members or um, stuff that goes on, so fraudulent um, works, um, just sort of misdemeanor, so to speak. Um. So just to clarify, my question was which officers um, in the whole SJCR, does the chair have to investigate? Oh, the chair investigates um, mainly the um, exec members and all other lower members normally investigated by um, president, vice president. I think what you're talking about is the complaints part of the constitution, which is, so if someone makes a complaint against someone in the SJCR, if that's a member of the exec, then that complaint would go to the chair. And if that was a member, if that was someone who wasn't on the exec, it would go to the president and then they would investigate. But if the person who made a complaint wasn't happy with that outcome of that kind of mini investigation, then they could take that to the chair who would then act as the investigator and would have seven days to like look into that and come up with an alternative. Thank you very much, both of them.